Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com with another weekly video. This week's video is about a topic called MIG Like TIG. Over at WeldingWeb.com, there's a big long thread called MIG Like TIG, and it centers around a user named ZTFab who has got a unique ability to lay down a stack of dimes that looks like a TIG weld with a MIG gun. So I gave it a shot with a couple of different welders and all kinds of different settings and all kinds of different techniques. And never did come up with what I thought was anywhere close to what ZT Fab was doing, but I did learn a little something. And what I'd like to do is get a get a big discussion going and and get people to post their own pictures and what they what techniques and what settings and what welders that they use, so everybody can learn a little something. Because I know everybody wants to be able to do the old stack of dimes thing. Now, just because you got even ripples and distinct ripples in a MIG weld doesn't mean anything. It's just something that people have come to like, especially in the uh, automotive and motorsports industry. It gives the appearance that the welder knows what he's doing and people request it and uh, people, the welders, want to be able to do it so they can keep customers happy. Doesn't really mean it's a quality weld, doesn't really mean anything, but it does look cool. So I'd like to be able to learn how to do it. So anybody out there that, that's got a good hand at it and, and can do it, would like to hear what you have to say. All right, you can see I've cut it down here. I, I, I pretty much decided that in order to get a real distinct set of ripples, you have to weld a little bit colder than you normally would weld. And also came to another conclusion, but that's probably the main one. Just setting it a little colder, and that way uh, each each movement of the torch makes a distinct ripple. I just hadn't figured out exactly what that pattern is yet to, to be able to get it. Kind of zeroing in on it. I don't really like to weld this cold. This is a eighth inch, eighth inch uh, cold rolled steel, and I normally would weld it probably 19 volts or hotter. But it seems to get closer to the stack of dimes look if I go colder. Here's an outside corner joint. I'm using kind of a little T pattern here. I'm going down into the joint and then crisscrossing the wide to make sure that the uh, weld widens out enough to wrap the corners in. And while I don't really uh, think that's necessarily the best way to do it or even hot enough, it does wind up with a decent looking end product. Now this is kind of my go-to method here, and you can change how the ripples appear by how, how big of a loop you make. I'm just kind of making a series of uh, a U's here, and again, not quite as hot as I would normally weld. Now I'm experimenting here just tracing the front of the puddle. And that seems to actually be a logical technique to use because the front of the puddle is the business end of the puddle. That's where the fusion takes place up there in the front. If you keep that arc moving back and forth across the front edge of the puddle like this, you will normally get good penetration and good fusion, but it doesn't, it doesn't yield exactly the look that I was looking to have. I'm doing the same thing here, tracing the front of the puddle on a T-joint. Just experimenting again. Nope, that's definitely not it, although it's a sound weld. And then, kind of dialed the settings in just a little bit, kind of looped it down around pretty far on the uh, bottom leg, and then came up and paused for a minute. And that seemed to about be as close as I could get. Not quite there yet, but I think I'm making a little bit of progress. That's why I'd like everyone's help to chime in and say what they do. Now, here's my conclusion. Lower voltage and wire feed speed settings are normally needed to get that MIG-like TIG look. And also, because ZT Fab mentioned he uses a Lincoln Power MIG 200, I have to believe that the welder itself makes a difference, and that would be because every welder has a different inductance setting. So, I'd like you to chime in. I'd like you to go over and join the forum if you're not a member yet at forum.weldingtipsandtricks.com. Post pictures of your MIG like TIG stuff, and let's all just have some fun and learn something. Thanks for watching again. Visit weldingtipsandtricks.com.